Forever chemicals, they get into our food, they get into our water. And these companies, their own documents reveal that they knew that PFAS caused harm since the 70s and intentionally covered it up. Check out the lawsuit here. Check it out. PFAS, or forever chemicals, are man-made substances that date back to the 1940s. They gained mass attention for their ability to repel water, oil, and stains. And over the decades, they've been used in a wide range of applications, for non-stick cookware and waterproof fabrics, to food packaging, cosmetics, even firefighting foams. But over time, concerns began to rise. According to the CDC, the chemicals do not break down in the environment. They can move through soils, contaminate drinking water, and build up in fish and wildlife. What are the health risks associated with PFAS chemicals? We've seen correlations with thyroid disease, certain kinds of cancer, um, kidney disease, liver dysfunction. They're called forever chemicals because they stay in your body. Maybe the company should have been immediately shut down when the public found out. You know, just to send a very stark message to these corporations. You should hear the stories people have about these forever chemicals. One man whose father was a production worker at a Scotch guard factory who died from a rare and aggressive cancer. Another whose career in the Minnesota Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, was ended because because he kept finding 3M dump sites. He literally would have had to stop talking to control his anger when he attempted to explain the blatant disregard for environmental safety or implications of the willful non-consideration of long-term effects that he dealt with. They called him an intemperate grudge bearer who held a distorted view. Well, turns out his danger assessment was accurate. At this point, we've all been deliberately poisoned. I mean, several forever chemicals found nearly everywhere in our day-to-day -day lives have been linked to thyroid cancer. And that's actual research, specifically certain per and polyfluoroalkyl substances, or PFAS, commonly known as forever chemicals, have been associated with a 56% increased risk of thyroid cancer diagnosis. This is according to new research published by the journal eBiomedicine. And since these forever chemicals are in a lot of our everyday products, including non-stick cookware, food packaging, water repellent clothing, stain resistant fabrics, PFAS chemicals have eventually found their way into our drinking water, household dust, and even inside of human blood. And these findings are big. This is the first human study to look at associations between PFAS exposure and the risk of thyroid cancer diagnosis. And they found these forever chemicals led to a 56% increased risk of thyroid cancer and that there is a positive association between thyroid cancer risk and exposure to other PFAS, including branched perfluorooctane sulfonic acid, perfluoronanaic acid, perfluorosyphosonic acid, and several others just to name a few. To add to that, the experts point out how with increasing exposure levels, your risk of thyroid cancer diagnosis increases. And this result was a significant result, which means that it cannot be explained just by chance. This is the first study to find such a significant association between exposure to linear PFAS and thyroid cancer diagnosis. Now, apart from what was said in this study, high levels of certain other PFAS have been previously found to be associated with increased blood cholesterol and blood pressure, reduced immunity and an increased risk of certain cancers such as kidney or testicular according to the U.S. Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry. And because PFAS are everywhere in our environment, including water, soil, and food, and the entire population is exposed on a daily basis and it is thus difficult to completely avoid exposure. So what are we supposed to do exactly? Well, watching and sharing this video for awareness is a good start. You can also hit the like button to help us get through the tricky YouTube algorithms. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and tap that notification bell. We really appreciate it. So we'll talk more about what you can do to avoid these forever chemicals as much as possible later in this video. So definitely stay tuned. So first, let's look at how these companies were well aware of the dangers of forever chemicals and actually kept them a secret from the public. The company 3M. In 1981, female workers at the DuPont chemical plant in Parkersburg, West Virginia, were suddenly told to stay away from the area where a certain group of chemicals called C8 was made. They didn't get much of an explanation. What they were not informed about was that eight of their colleagues who had worked with C8 were pregnant and had babies with various health issues, one of them with eye defects and just a single nostril. Another baby had eye and tear duct defects, and a third with C8 in its cord blood. Probably one of the most disturbing parts of this whole story is how the companies defend themselves. Instead of working with the government and scientists to resolve the issue and find better ways, you should hear this, guys. It's just madness from here on out. The company tried to calm any worried employees by saying that using C8 at the Washington work plants was safe and that 
there was no evidence of harmful exposure. They even compared C8 to table salt, saying it had low toxicity. But I think we all know better now. PFAS chemicals made by DuPont and 3M were developed in the 1940s, but the public only learned about their dangers in the late 1990s. But a new study reveals that these companies knew about the toxicity of PFAS as early as the 1960s and were aware of the dangers by 1970. This information comes from an analysis of documents from the Chemical Industry Documents Library at the University of California, San Francisco. The documents were discovered during lawsuits against DuPont in 1998 and 2002. 1998's Tenant versus DuPont, in which the plaintiff complained that DuPont dumped more than 7,100 tons of PFOA laced sludge onto his property, and 2002's Leach versus DuPont, a class action suit in which more than 80,000 West Virginia plaintiffs charged the company with contaminating the local water supply with PFOA and PFOS. In 2020, researchers from UCSF and the University of Colorado studied these documents and they found similarities with how tobacco and fossil fuel industries covered up information. The PFAS manufacturers suppressed unfavorable research, distorted public disclosure, kept information from exposed employees, and didn't report evidence of PFAS dangers to the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, as required. All of this could ultimately figure into future PFAS-related lawsuits, both from plaintiffs alleging illnesses, from exposure to the chemicals and from communities wanting remediation and cleanup of contaminated soil and groundwater. I mean, the documents clearly show that the companies were aware of the risks associated with the chemicals that they were producing. And as the evidence of the dangers of PFAS mounted, both from company research and independent studies, 3M and DuPont began covering up what they were learning. In 1991, researchers unaffiliated with the companies began detecting PFAS in groundwater. The companies responded with a joint press release stating, according to the studies by DuPont and 3M Corporation, C8 has no known toxic or ill health effects in humans at concentrated levels detected. Later in 2000, health officials in Lubbock, West Virginia found that several forms of PFAS, including C8, were present in the local drinking water. In response, DuPont assured the officials that all was well. The officials repeated the company line publicly, stating that DuPont reports that its toxicological and epidemiological Epidemiological data to support confidence that exposure guidelines established by DuPont are protective of human health. But now it was already too big to hide. Scientists not connected to the companies were publishing studies about the dangers of PFAS, connecting it to a higher chance of certain cancers and other health problems. The tenant case had already been settled and the leech case was on the way. In 2000, 3M decided to stop making Scotchgard, which used PFAS. In an internal email, a DuPont lawyer admitted that the chemical lasts a long time in the environment and gets into our bloodstream. The company realized it needed to inform the public even though it was late in doing so. In 2002, after Leach was adjudicated, a DuPont vice president tried to enlist help from an unlikely source, the EPA. Urgent EPA action needed. The vice president wrote to the agency, we need the EPA to quickly, like first thing tomorrow, say the following. Consumer products sold under the Teflon brand are safe and there are no human health effects known to be caused by the PFOA. The EPA did not accommodate the company's request. Nowadays, most people are aware of the dangers of PFAS and how it's found in a lot of different things like toilet paper, menstrual items, and contact lenses. The EPA has set rules for safe levels of certain PFAS in drinking water and they plan to include more types by 2026. People are asking for products without PFAS creating a market for safer alternatives. This means companies like DuPont and 3M should either stop or reduce the use of these chemicals or risk falling behind. Studies like the recent one could also make it challenging for these companies to improve their reputations and hide the truth like before. Toxic forever chemicals have been found in more than one in four public drinking water systems this year in concentrations at or above the Environmental Protection Agency's minimum reporting levels. That's according to new EPA data showing hundreds of water systems having detected PFAS. Together, these systems provide drinking water to about 46 million people. According to one analysis, the chemicals have turned up in nearly every state affecting water systems large and small. Many of the systems that have already detected PFAS provide water to over a million customers each, including Atlanta, Houston, San Antonio, Dallas, 
Phoenix, Silver Spring, Maryland, San Jose, California, and Long Island, New York. And new data show WSSC Water, which serves nearly 2 million Marylanders just outside of Washington, D.C., discovered in June. Two types of PFAS exceeding the EPA's reporting levels. So how can you reduce your PFAS exposure? Well, first, if you're worried about the quality of your drinking water, the EPA suggests contacting your local water provider to find out what they're doing to address PFAS contamination. They also recommend considering in-home filtration systems like activated carbon or reverse osmosis, which is proven to remove these chemicals. Check if your town has tested its water, especially if you use a private well. If testing is expensive, there are options for free or low-cost filtration systems for low-income households. Some communities also have programs offering sampling for affected residents. Switching to bottled water might help, but it's also not a perfect solution as it's not regulated and may still contain PFAS. Some other ways to reduce exposure, avoid using non-stick cookware, choose water-resistant clothing instead of waterproof, and stay away from grease-resistant food wrappers. There's also the extra challenge with products due to limited or unclear labeling. What you can do is you can support companies that commit to being PFAS-free. Organizations like Green Science Policy Institute and the Environmental Working Group provide lists of products without harmful chemicals. Having this information gives you the power to make choices. Without it, you can't make informed decisions and you won't reduce your health risks to these forever chemicals. Senator Shelley Moore Capito, a Republican, and Tom Carper, a Democrat, released the draft bill recently, looking to set a definition for the sprawling class of chemicals, allowing states to assist individuals, well owners, dealing with contamination, and it sets a hard deadline line for the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, to finalize an in-progress rule that would set drinking water standards for a few specific PFAS. Some Republicans, meanwhile, are trying to exempt some industries from liability for the substances. So negotiations on this issue are ongoing. Something to keep an eye out for the next one, definitely. Make sure you guys always tune in and I'll see you on the next documentary.